Welcome back to Giant Dreams Under Construction. We're taking a little twist today with Remembrance Day coming up and November being the month to remember, we're gonna take a moment to honor some of our First Nation veterans. I'd like to start with the story of the man who helped raise me and who made a huge contribution and an impact on First Nation veterans um, and Fort William First Nation along with starting the Remembrance Service on Mount McKay in 1995. This is my grandfather, Francis Fasano Banning, along with his best friend, John Baptist Lewis. Both were members of Fort William First Nation. Both fought in World War II. However, only one came back. And that was a normal story or a typically sad story for most of our veterans and most of our warriors that went away. My grandfather's story goes, he was 15 years old when him and his best friend enlisted. They were far too young, so they gave wrong names. By the time the Canadian Army found out that they were underage, they had already spent thousands of dollars training these men and they were ready for battle. They received the permission from the mothers of these men and so they sent the men off to war. Now, the men were a part of the um, storming of Normandy and when my grandfather landed on the beaches he went looking for one of his friends. Uh, they landed during gunfire, there were explosions and because most of the men were first linemen um, where they were basically there as riflemen they had all the odd jobs. My grandfather being only 17 at the time obviously very scared um, they made it to their trenches and his commander actually sent him to go get water. While he was going from trench to trench to get water, he was asking where his friend was. In one of the trenches, there was a lifeless body, which was his best friend that he had enlisted with. Short while later, on his journey to still get that water, there were more explosions going off around him, so he dove to the ground. While he was laying on the ground, he heard a voice that told him to get up. As he stood, he was hit in the legs, below the knees, with shrapnel. He was wounded and he was sent to the hospital, and from there he was transported back to England and then back home to Canada. Had he not heard that voice and had he not stood up, he would have not be gone on to do the things that he did, I would not be standing here today. My grandfather came back home, married the love of his life. They had 11 children and 60 plus grandchildren and great grandchildren. From there, my grandfather went on to become the manager of Parks and Rec Division for the city of Thunder Bay. He was the manager there for 34 years. He was one of the only people in Ontario licensed to do fireworks. He did all of the firework shows for the city of Thunder Bay at Chippewa Park. He has also received um, numerous awards for his work. He received um, the Canadian Aboriginal War Veterans Award. He has also received um, the Everyday Hero of Canada or Everyday Hero Citizen Award in 1999 and he received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Fort William First Nation for his work regarding the Remembrance Service that is located on Mount McKay every November 11th. The reason why he started that service though however is a sad reason. His friend that passed away with him was never honored at any of the services that regularly took place in town, whether it was Waverly or Fort William Gardens. A lot of First Nation veterans have not been honored or not been remembered. Their names have been lost in time and it's all a part of the sadness of war and the casualties of war. We have a book of hundreds of First Nations warriors that went away and that were never recognized. My grandfather held this very dear to him and made it his life's passion to find these names 
and have them commemorated and have them immortalized, which you see on the plaques today now up at the Cenotaph. The Cenotaph is not a symbol of Christianity, although it is a white cross and it's most like it's most associated with that. The white cross represents the soldiers that fell during these wars and they represent the lives that were given. The Cenotaph is a war memorial and it is there for us to remember and to pay honor and tribute to the people that gave their lives for our country and the freedom that we now enjoy. It's sad that people have to go and seek these names out and actually take the initiative themselves, but it's a wondrous thing when they actually do, and it's amazing what you see um, people and what their minds and their hearts put together can accomplish. My grandfather was only one man. There were thousands, thousands upon thousands of First Nations that enlisted in the war voluntarily and went away. They were never acknowledged, they were never recognized, and we need to, um, part of my reason for doing this show today is to pay tribute, pay homage, and to get some of the names out there publicly, um, and just to let the families of those fallen soldiers and of those veterans know that we still support them. We appreciate all of their sacrifices and all of the effort and everything that they've done since they've returned from war or since their families have had to endure the loss of their lives. Now, I'm going to take a brief break and when we come back, we're gonna go into some things that we typically do at our Remembrance Service in honor of our First Nation veterans. Thank you for joining and I, please come back.